<laughs> right. <laughs> Take two. Yeah, look out for bloody <laughs> wasps. wasps and all that sort of crap. Well, here we are, Josh. Here we are, no, episode two of the podcast, or yeah. Back My Place. Um, and we are back our place. And we actually are back your place. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's, 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 uh, well, it's be been a quite a morning, really, hasn't it? We've it has. We've both been, been at work. Yeah. And uh, as always, I've probably worked slightly harder. <laughs> 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 yeah, of course. Or it, maybe it just feels harder because <laughs> I'm so much older. It's actually, it was quite lucky I was there, wasn't it? Because it, unless it was only because you both reminded me on we Friday. Where's to, to remind you? You were working today. <laughs> yeah, jo- Josh was um, came up to me and said, "You've been giving people instructions on what to do at the weekend." Yeah. We well, do realise you're on at the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just planning for any eventuality. <laughs> planning in case you didn't turn up. Yeah, exactly. But as it was, I'm ultra reliable and turned up. Indeed. Yeah. So what I thought people might like to know is, um, obviously, the man, the myth, that legend that is Dr. Phil. <laughs> people will know you from busy with Dr. Phil. <laughs> from JM Farming yeah. and from Back My Place. Yes. But they probably don't know too much about you. No. So why don't you start from wherever you want to start? Uh, okay. If I go back as far as I've known you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> do that. I probably met you for the first time. I reckon fifteen years ago. You're not, but a slip of a lad. No, some boy. Yeah. What was it? Twenty odd. I would have been. Yeah. No, I'd have been about fifteen. 15. That's yeah. right. Of course. Yeah. You're, you're just you old beyond your years. But um. <laughs> But mum and dad have known you That's since right, forever, yeah. so... Yes. So we take you back that far, 15 years. Sort of centering around there. Yeah, start yeah. there. Well, so when I got to know you first, was it, well, obviously as a, as, a, as a person and not a little whippersnapper, Yes. because I knew Tom and Rose through work. Actually, yeah, the whole North Week thing goes back quite a long time, because I, Josh and I are both at North Week now, but I had a stint at North Week in the early 90s just for a year or so after I'd finished my PhD and that's when I got to know Tom uh, my dad Professor, the, Professor yeah. Misselbrook probably yes. the foremost uh, gaseous emissions expert in the UK enough respect <laughs> anyway so I got to know Tom and then so we've been keeping an eye on uh, his, Josh's career Thank you. Uh, uh, Hello, hi. Bess. Find the wasp, Whoops. Bessie. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Bessie, come on. With crotum, with crotum mitten. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so we, yeah, I'm just ministering to my wasp stick. So, yeah, I had a little stint at North Week back then, which was a great fun, but very different. I wasn't working on the farm then. I was um, fighting about in the labs. Uh, and after, soon after that, what did I do? What did you do? I went, oh, I went and worked for what was the Agricultural Training Board. Right. As their the project, uh, as a project development manager, looking at um, uh, raising money for training projects, agricultural training projects, land-based, environmental, woodland, hell of a lot of woodland projects. Mm-hmm in Scotland, Wales and England. So I did that for a number of years. And when I was doing that, I ended up working with a lot of colleges. And one of which would have been One Dutchy. of which was Dutchy, yeah. And um, and I got offered a job at Dutchy. I thought, well, you know what, I'll have a change. So I went, that's when I started work at Dutchy. And when I was at Dutchy, that's when our paths crossed Cross. when you were a young adult, because yeah. you were a, sort of like a rebel without a clue. I knew what I actually, <laughs> I'm not sure that's true. <laughs> I knew no, what I wanted exactly to do. What you wanted to do. I yeah. knew what I wanted to do, and I just didn't know how to mm. go down the path of doing yeah. it. So I think we had probably met by chance. Yeah, well, because well, your old man, uh, I think we were in the pub or something. Your we dad's, went out for a tea yeah. at the railway, yeah, yeah. And your dad said, well, Josh is a sort of like a bit stuck between a couple of um, think. Well, not stuck once, as he said, on what you wanted to do, but mm. not quite sure on what to do next, because your first stab at going to college hadn't worked no. out quite right for you. And 
and I thought, oh, this this guy's a prime candidate for a really good apprenticeship because you were working at Wills. At the I time. was working for Will and Joe. Yeah. So I thought this is a this is this is to me as an agricultural education professional. <laughs> this was the this was the holy grail. We had a keen student, a keen employer, you know, and a good a good workplace to learn. Yep. And us as a at the time we were a very good college. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, yeah, yeah, so that came together and you you rattled up through the apprenticeship train and I I kept a sort of a bit of a a closer eye on a you. Cause I, yeah, cuz I was kind of cuz because I had to take, a, I took a little bit of a risk getting you in on the apprenticeship. Yes, I wasn't actually. <laughs> it's probably worth saying that. Though. <laughs> yes. So to get onto the level three apprenticeship yeah, scheme, you needed more points. I needed, I needed more. Yeah. Yeah. From my GCSEs. Yeah, better than I GCSE had. points than yeah. you had. Um, yeah. And but I, I knew you weren't as stupid as that. No. Or I hoped you weren't. <laughs> and I just, just thought you'd have been, you'd have. Sh- got really bored on a level two mm. although just... you would have enjoyed work, working on the farm but you would have got really bored it would have been too close to the experience that had scared you off college in the first place yes um, I think it's that... a load of not enjoy not behaving themselves I think it's that classic um, thing that I, I class myself as quite intelligent yes <laughs> in an area that I am interested in yes I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna write a novel well, you might do wonder. <laughs> Hence, why I struggled to get my English GCSE. If, if there was an equivalent of YouTube for novels, you might well have Be right. done it. Yeah, but um, but no, I think what also helped on that particular cohort that I joined was um, some good kids on it, weren't there? There's some other good lads on it and lasses, mm. and also Roger Clark, who was took a, yeah, a level was three. Brilliant. He yeah. was brilliant. Yeah, and Mervyn Gingell. Yeah. So that's what I knew. So that was the other thing that I was able to do by almost directing my team to take a risk. I was confident in that risk because I knew you were you were should be able to do it, and because they were a good team. Uh, that increased the chances. If I if 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 I'd have got a flaky team doing the apprenticeship, mm. and they didn't know how to get the best out of people, and work well, it would have been more of a risk. So I'd, I although I, what would be interesting is whether in this day and age, I, I would I would have been able to do it. I think we we were, we were much, we had much more, f- flair. Yes. Back then, I think things are much more run by the book now. So that would have been. Ten years ago, I went on to the apprenticeship scheme. Yeah, and then of course, yeah, you, yeah, you roared away on that and did the level four. Did level four. When, and when were you top student? Level three. Level so three. Was, yes. So, so I went from, <laughs> I went from an A level yeah. dropout to yeah. top student. Your top student in space yeah. of twelve months. And of course, that made me look good because I told everybody we needed to get him on the apprenticeship when really. He shouldn't I should have been. been there, yeah. And it was, and it all worked out. So where does that take me to? Well, how old are we now then? What, so what, what year about, is this? I reckon I'm twenty at this point. And where? What so. does that make me? What was it? When? What year were ten you? Years, sort of ten years student? ago. Ten years ago. So at that point, was I? I was probably getting close to being vice principal then. Then yeah. was I? Yeah. Uh, so then we did that. And when? Did, what? What year was that? Ten years ago. So I was in the middle of doing the, the Bicton and Dutchy merger. Yeah. yeah. That's right. So, Josh would have enrolled onto a Dutchie program. I was always keen to join Dutchie and Victon together. It was one of the things I wanted to see. Actually, when I first started working at Dutchie, and the opportunity came for us to do a load of work to execute that merger to put the plans together at about that time. And actually, the the apprenticeship provision was a strong part of that because we had so many apprentices in Devon, Cornwall, Somerset, yep. if you endorse it, that we could show that we were already looking after that patch hmm. to a large extent. Uh, so in a funny sort of way, you know, the sort of evidence of the... And the level four, nobody was doing a level four either, so that was sort of... In, no. education, in agricultural education, that was relatively aspirational. And I really enjoyed the level four. Yeah, it was a very yeah. novel programme. yeah. yeah. In actual fact, my old boss, who was the principal of Dutchy, went on to when he sort of semi-retired. He ran the level four program. Yeah, Steve Parsons. He ran the level four. Yeah, 
So that shows what a, sort of a solid bloke he was. He was quite prepared to shed high office, mm. have a change, and actually go in many ways go back to what he liked doing. Anyway, so there, yeah. So I then was part of the team that led, and I, I led the sort of training planning and the, a lot of the costings for that merger, and pr- had to do all the presentations. And we won the, we took over Victon. So then I was doing loads of work running that Bicton and Duchy merger, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And it was brilliant working across both the colleges. Mm. And sort of after that, I kind of felt that I'd sort of done, your done, bit. done me bit, really. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so then so I, I so did a Steve Parsons. <laughs> handed yeah. it off to someone else. Yeah, handed it on to somebody else and, and uh, went, and lo and behold, cross with again. Josh again which was interesting because I so there's, a, there's about a 10 year gap there they sort of fast forwarded through where I finished my apprenticeship yeah. you done your merger yeah and then sort of I got my head down and worked for 10 yeah, years yeah, yeah that's so. exactly and <coughs> nearly got married once nearly got married once yep <laughs> shucked out of that one yep. then definitely got married <laughs> definitely got married <laughs> see in all that time I didn't really get married I'd got <laughs> <laughs> I, I probably got married a bit before that. Uh, yes. Yeah, and uh, I, I sort of dallied with it slightly less than Josh. We decided we would, and we did it. Whereas Josh dipped his toe in the water a little bit more than me. Was. What was <laughs> odd was when the when I had the opportunity to come to Northwick. Yeah. I didn't know that you had left Dutchy at that oh, time. Oh, did you? No, because I actually put you down as a reference. Yeah. If you remember. Yeah, I do. I didn't realise at the time that you were ah, a Northwick employee. So did our applications. You started in February, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. I started in April. So so if I'd started in February, when you put your application in, I might not have actually been not there then. No. Because it I mean, always it's a takes... a window, isn't yeah, it? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I, I can't remember when I actually applied. So I remember... Uh, remember because I, I've only ever worked for Will and Joe. Yeah. So when it comes to applying to work somewhere like Northwick and they want... And the process is... Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not like... It's um, a mind bend, isn't Most it? farm jobs where... Word of, word of mouth yeah. gets you most places. Can you start Tuesday, by? Yeah, exactly, yeah. It's, uh, right, we need your referees and your yeah. references. And I was thinking, oh, crikey. <laughs> I have one, which is the people I work for. Yeah. And, and I'm not sure I want you to speak to them b- before I'm offered the job. No. Right? Well, you can, you should be able to tick a little box that says, please don't contact yeah. until... So I said, I think I sent you an email saying, can yeah. I put you down as a reference? Cause, and yeah. Roger Clark as well. Yeah. And he... he he did the same. Yeah, see, Roger's moved on. Roger's not at the college anymore. No, no. He's um, working for a private provider. Yeah, so so you didn't know. And, uh, yeah, because I'm not sure when your old man would have found out that I got the got the job. I think I said to him, uh, when you replied saying, yes, that's fine, I'll give you a reference. And I said, oh, Phil's going to give me a reference. I think he then said, He's just been given a job at Northwick <laughs> as well. I think that's how I do. Um, Brilliant. Well, I have to say, in, in terms of my, if we laughingly could call it a career, I, I've i thoroughly enjoyed my time at Northwick. I, I really have. I put it down as a, as a bit of a highlight, really, uh, partly because of the change, yes. partly because of the people. Yes. Partly because it... Uh, it kind of vindicated my de- my decision that it was time for a change. Yeah. So I've never I've, and I and I feel better. That's the thing I like most about it. I've just spied behind a you. Deer. Your dog chasing a deer. Into the ah, woods. How far's he gone? <laughs> gone down into the down the bottom right hand corner somewhere. I thought that's a deer. And then it's uh, then a, and then a, a Bessie. Bessie. <laughs> I wonder if Liz realises she. <laughs> oh, it's up, it's a bloody Bowman. He's meant to be here on deer control. <laughs> It's always been like that. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, sorry, you were saying. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I've thoroughly enjoyed it, and what, and I've really enjoyed getting back into. Uh, well, it was nice working with your old man again for a little while before he retired. Yeah, Slacker. I'm not sure that. Uh, see, I joined and then he left. Yeah. I'm not sure if Are I they take related? that the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure what's he, what's he, he trying thought, to say. He thought, God, if those two are down there. Look at that. There's oh. another deer down there. On the left, underneath the. Oh thing. yeah! Look at his big white bum. He doesn't know that Bessie's on the other side. Do you side. think 
Well, do you think maybe the one that Bessie chased was maybe a, a fawn from, from that one? Possibly. And that might be Mum. Yes. So we've gone on a tangent here, but there's a deer. We're, we're situated. And people, on, people on YouTube will be able to see. We're, yeah. we're in Phil's summer house. Um, underneath the tree, where well, you can hear knocking noises in the background. Yeah. We can see and out. Blo it's bloody windy as well. See out over the bog field. Yeah. And there's a, a couple of deer and one of Phil's dogs out there as well. Yeah. Do you Having a word of a time. Do you think Liz knows the dog's gone after it? Oh, she'll come back. Potentially. Right. <laughs> she'll come back. Yeah, so I've, I've really enjoyed um, uh, working with... What's, what's been really nice is the educational world, particularly 16 to 18, and the level I've got into it, it was just about the bureaucracy. Numbers. And Yeah, and... There comes a point when you've gone round that circle so many times, and I never like to be. Yeah, I just got to the point where I was thinking I don't really want to. You got to just keep doing it again. Yeah, yeah. you have got to enjoy what you do. Yeah, definitely. You? That yeah. I, I think that's where mine and yours philosophy is quite similar. Yes. If you're not enjoying it, don't do it. It ain't worth doing. No. So yeah, that was that was the point. So there, that's that's sort of me, so, Josh, so over the past... latter years. Past four years you've been at Northwick. Yeah. The same I can't time. believe how quick that's gone. No, it has. It's gone really quick. And it's fair to say you've changed slightly from an all out and out farm <laughs> worker to <laughs> to the trying to run the place. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, that's the thing. This is why I, I, I rate. It's another nice thing about Rothamsted is, or a place like that, is you never know what's around the corner. Yes. And there's so many <clears> strands. As people who see you watch. Josh's films there's so many uh, threads of work and if you were to sort of like cut through those threads five years ago six years ago eight years ago ten years what the place does isn't is wouldn't be the same in all know, of those it's things changing. it's yeah, for, yeah. yeah it's forever evolving there's Bessie look just come back yeah, to find another dip. yeah and so what you hope you try, or if I, if I was running the place, what you hope you try to do is to maintain a culture, a standard of work, a sort of like a, an ethos and philosophy. So you've got to have some things which are constant. Mm -hmm. But the work that you do within that framework of culture and endeavour and the drive to be scientifically good, excellent, the work will always shift. Yeah. So when I first worked there, there was all sorts of defra work, animal behaviour work, uh, a hell of a lot of real grassland production science. Um, that isn't that isn't the same now. No, no. It's it's much more about some of the fundamentals of the way in which nutrients and resources cycle through the landscape and through agriculture. I think what's in quite nice about it is, is obviously there's a lot going on mm. and there's a lot of opportunity to get, to get involved in what's going yeah. on as little or as much as you yeah. want to, well, to a degree. The stuff it's opened up for you with the Gatsby <clears throat> stuff. And yeah. I, don't know, I don't know if listeners and viewers know, he's actually going to be on the big screen in cinemas. We'll be you, in a cinema soon, uh, you you sometime in May. I, I put have it out you? on Jay and Farm, I've not put it out on Back My Place. No. Yeah. So, so yeah, got involved with the Gatsby Foundation. Yeah. Do some technicians' jobs, sort of uh, <laughs> stuff. So there was, I came into the yard at work. Was it the week before last? I suppose. Yeah, now, Friday week. Yeah. And there was sort of like a a limo Merc, a huge sort of luxury travel mini bus thing. Yeah. I think there may be in another vehicle. There was there was two more vehicles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there was this scrummage of people. And at the far end of it was him, <laughs> Josh. <laughs> I don't know, doing whatever he, the talent. The talent. He actually said that, didn't he? It, it does, I was referred to as the talent of the <laughs> yeah, day. Yeah. Yeah, so there was the talent amongst this mob of um people ranging from the blokes who drove the limos through to the bloke at the top I suppose who was making the film directing yeah and everything in between the sandwich getter yep 
Personally. Oh, there was a clapperboard. Yeah, we had a clapperboard. Wasn't it? We were actually seen. A, well, I didn't. <laughs> we actually seen a real light. And I was the only one who knew what it was called. <laughs> yeah, we were like, <laughs> they got one of the things. That does this. <laughs> Do you know why? It's because there used to be a thing on, when I was a kid, there used to be a children's TV programme called Screen Test. Do you remember no, that? Before and me. yeah, so Screen Test was a uh, sort of like a quiz show. We had the kids turned up and they had to answer questions on sort of film clips and things like that that were on. So yeah, I, I don't know what the um, an adult equivalent like that might be. He was presented by a guy called Rod something or other. Anyway, look at it. I'm sure it'll be on YouTube. I used to love that thing because it used to have kids coming on. There was a slot on it every week where kids would show their own films. Right. And invariably, even as a kid, you knew they were rubbish. But some were really good. And what I really liked was they used to do... Anima- a lot of them used to do stop-motion animation. And it used mm. to... I just was bemused as a kid as how, how they could be so organised at home and have so much resource they could actually make animations it was almost like a window on a world I couldn't believe and I re got into that or when my when our two kids were young and with mobile or with little you know there weren't even iPods little tiny cheap those awful tiny cheap sort of like half a megapixel cameras that used to get those early digital cameras yeah. that were almost when they became throwaway money Spoke you know so yeah, like yeah. seven or eight quid yeah Jake had, and he used to do make all sorts of animations of his Lego characters and all the rest of it I thought this is brilliant this is like screen test <laughs> in real life and someone someone can do it and anyway that's nothing that's, that's a really, tangent that is yeah. a tangent <laughs> but yeah it was it, it was one of those it was uh, I thought oh god I wish that stuff was available when I was again. now it's, it's well that's it's not really. a tangent really in some ways it's like the tube and all the rest of it it's the democratisation of the airwaves, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose so. All so if we stuff. go back off on another tangent. <laughs> back to the life of Dr Phil. Oh, yeah. Where we are now, you've got your small holding, yes, your shed right. and your cows. Yes. When did you get... Start that. Start it with that. Because you did that alongside running the college. Yeah. Which yeah. I can't think how you ever found <laughs> the time to have a herd of cows. At well, we, we, Liz and I... Uh, we probably like a lot of people we always wanted a bit of land Liz is from a farming family yeah I'm not although my dad was always involved in agriculture actually my dad used to do a lot of work with Tom so, yeah so we're we're from a similar yeah. sort of background yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so it's just that my my dad's probably 20 years older than Tom yeah uh, so he was a soil scientist for ADAS so in consequence they used to do loads of work together yeah yeah so my my dad wasn't a farmer, but I was born on a farm because my dad was a farm worker for six, seven, eight years. So I was born when he was working on a <coughs> working on a farm in uh, in Mid Devon. Um, uh, anyway, so you've you've sort of got that itch a bit, haven't you? Mm. And so Liz and I, we had a little house in the village. And we were looking around to say, could we possibly sell that and find somewhere with just an acre or two of land? Mm-hmm. And we did. We we managed to get together and we put a bid, an offer on a place much further up on the moor. Um, so a lovely location, not such a a bit of an odd setup like these. You've got to make compromises when you're trying to get in this. So it's yes. a bit of an odd setup with. So there was more than one property there. They were all sort of bolted together in oh, a bit of an odd way. Yeah. All sort of stuff that would give a mortgage lender a sort of like a heart attack, really. But anyway, that they said they would lend on it. Uh, so we knew, therefore, we'd got a package where we could just about do it. Yeah. Uh, but we were gazumped, so we. So oh. signed it and everything like that and, it was or, out. and then yeah or, and somebody came in and offered sort of like 40 or 50 grand more and it wasn't back when how long ago was that Josh I have no idea uh, how long have you been 90 when did you build we've the been house? here for 20 
23 or 4 years so it was about 20 say 25 years ago so 26 years turn ago. of the mille- turn of the yeah turn of the name. and um so it, to us it was a huge amount of money but looking back on it it isn't it was peanuts but it i think we scraped together that that place that we wanted to buy would have been 120,000 pounds right bearing in mind it had lots of you know potential problems with it yeah and i think it was about 7 acres but it what it proved to us is we it, it could, was kind of doable yes we thought when we were gazumped for sort of like 20 30, i think it was about 30,000 quid the okay. offer so in some ways you almost can't blame the people for oh, no, no. banking that but they shouldn't have done it they no. broke the they broke the sort of code really so we actually thought, shit, we can't afford it because that we'd never have been able to yeah. do that. And if prices were suddenly starting to do that, we'd be stuck. So we mainly sat at home, and uh, I, I said, the only way we're going to do this is we're going to knock. Up, we've got to I knock love on that some story. Doors. Yeah, literally went door knocking. Yeah, on. yeah, we're going to because if because it that's the only way we're going to find it. And Liz, bless her, I thought, right, well, I'm going to be the one knocking on the doors. Really, she was literally out the following day. I got a phone call at work, so I was at college. Yeah, Phil, 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 how early can you get home? And I said, Well, yeah, I'm trying to run a college year, dude. <laughs> Some of us run a college year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and I wasn't at that point. That's that I was director of research there then, I think. Right, anyway, uh, any roll up. So I said, Well, I can get, I'll, I'll leave prompt. She said, Right, meet me at East Week. Um, and because we'd sort of done a little list of where we'd be worth knocking on the door yeah. and down at East Week there's a lovely little hamlet of old farmhouses blah 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 just a typical sort of like Dartmoor Devon hamlet of tumble down barns farmhouses sheds so we thought there's got to be something there if nothing else just to... anyway Liz went there knocked on the door of a farm and he said well none of this we could sell it was all county council it was all count tenant to uh, tenant buildings but he said it's interesting you knock on the door because we're just about to sort of like have a family meeting because he said we do own some bits and pieces around here but we know for what we want to do to our farm business we need to sell some of these little small bits on the moor mm-hmm with an effort to buy something bigger it's something bigger yeah. or, or, or more together yeah, you know yeah. so somewhere because they were dairy farmers somewhere they could sort of aim to get towards sort of the 500 600 cows yeah which you can't do around here and their yeah. central their central home farm was a county farm yeah so they were under pressure if you like to think about relinquishing that tenancy yeah. so so them thinking they needed to move they was already as a family starting to think about how they would do that then we knocked on the door and said well we're up for potentially buying something we literally came out here to this place yeah but of course there was nothing here there was no there was a fall two fallen down barns yeah the shed was there the shed was there because the farmer had built that shed and anyway by the time all the shooting and shouting had finished the, the 120 grand that we squirreled together to buy the place we were gazumped on yep. bought well, this with eight acres right so we know how but in some ways that shows how the prices have gone up because yeah, yeah. the place that we put 120 grand on had a house, house. and eight acres and so you bought eight acres eight acres with a shed a, eight, no we didn't, didn't have a shed. shed no not at okay. that point the eight acres was the bog right the bit that's now the garden and the paddock yeah and the falling down house and shed. Get on. That was that was 120 grand. Um, which. So yeah, a lot yeah, of money. Yeah, for us, yeah, that was that was every penny. That was it. Yeah. That was that was us, and it meant, of course, we'd got a lovely little cottage in South Seal. So we went from having a nice little house that was warm and dry, <laughs> and so, for a lot of people, it would have been. If that had been your only house, you wouldn't have been disappointed in life, yeah, if you yeah, know yeah. what I mean. I mean, it was tiny. It was very, very, very tiny. It was two, two up and two down. So it wasn't a big house, but it was a, it was a lovely house. So you traded that for eight a acres bog. of Dartmoor bog. <laughs> yeah. 
<coughs> barn and a house as well. No, because your house was a no, yeah, your yeah, house, the house, a house. No, yeah. the house the house was um a part building. yeah, basically a part started shell. Yeah. Cause the family that we bought it from had started to build the house. But there'd been shall we say let's just say there were some irregularities in the planning. Right. <laughs> So the um, we weren't even sure when we bought it that we, that we would have that the planning would be allowed to go ahead. It was a total gamble. Yeah. But but the gamble we the way we counterbalanced that gamble was uh, we thought it's a wonderful location. Anybody with half a soul would love to be here, and we thought if worst comes to the worst and and the planning permission is reneged on or we can't do it somebody with deeper pockets than us would, would have come out yeah. and thrown you know money and money and money at the solicitors and we thought if the worst comes to the worst we will get our money back but of course then we wouldn't have had a house we would have had to yeah, start right. it again but as it was we we sort of went into ne- negotiation with the national park sorted out all of loose ends um, and yeah over the next couple of years built the house yes yeah, so you moved a caravan in yeah we moved a caravan lived in, in a lived caravan in for two years two yeah, years two building years. the house yeah right and um, yeah which was wasn't too bad and that's right the and the guy we bought it from said now you're in he said those two fields behind the house he said within the next ten years he said I'd be. I think we'll be needing to sell those to finance the new farm they were. Yeah. And Liz and I were down here one day building, doing some stuff on the house, knocking up some plasterboard or something. And there was a. <laughs> the farmer, he used to drive a big old Isuzu pickup. He came. Thundering down. Thundering down. He hit a. He hit a. There used to be a sort of like a tr- uh, a ditch in the middle of that field. He sort of hit that. Bounced <laughs> and skinny to a halt. He'd just come from the pub, so he was a little bit half-assed. And and, he, and um, he said, "You know, you know, I said it'd be ten years, ten years before I sell this, sell these fields." He said, yeah. he said "They've got to go by the end of the month." Oh, oh. So, because we'd obviously spent all our money on this. Yeah, and you thought I can't afford not to buy it. No, exactly. So, but it was another fortuitous thing when you're building a house. The way that the uh, lenders work is you get what's called a staged Yeah, you mortgage. get it in section. So yeah. as, you, as you build a bit, they lend you a bit more yeah. and so on. So they lent you that money to well, buy. So no, what, what we did was we just finished the staircase right. and put the windows in. Or, or had we finished the staircase? Anyway, we'd done something which meant that they signed off the next chunk of money. Yeah. So the next chunk of money for the house... Had landed. Had landed. And we spent that... On the land. <laughs> on the land. That's what we did. Because, of course, they, they didn't check yeah, it Yeah, they up. just give you the money. No, yeah, because they, they I think they came out to see that we'd done what we did. So They were happy. The, the yeah, time, so yeah. the money came through for the... Yeah, the money came through. And what was it? They, I, I think the money that had come through was for the staircase and for the windows because it was about 18 months so what that meant is we got the roof on so I think it was the big payment that said we'd now turned it into a, a, a dry a dwelling, yeah. yeah a dry place mm-hmm. which meant they signed off 25 grand or whatever I can't remember what we paid for the, the two fields but that the lovely thing about that was that was also when we met or got on, found out much more about our neighbours because we hadn't really done much with the neighbours here because we were building the house and everything. Mm-hmm. And our neighbour, who's now a really good friend, came over and has said, as Mr Farmer, has he spoken to you about selling a bit of ground? And he said, yeah. He said, do you want it? I said, well, at that point, I wasn't in a position. I said, I'd love it, but we got fuck all money, so, yeah. it's, so it's yours, sort of thing. Uh, he said, well, look, it, it, it'll come up quick, but he's, he, he said... If you do manage to raise the money, let us talk about between us what we all want. And I promise I won't bid against you. Cause, yeah, I see. Because if he wanted, wanted to, he's, he was a, he's been a farmer for a million years. He's got all the collateral he could. Yeah. 
he could have just blown us all out of the yeah. water. But he was really nice. He said, "Well, if you want those two, I won't won't bid against you." Because he said the worst case scenario for all of us is we're bidding against each other. Yeah, yeah. And you don't end up with what you want, and I end up paying too much. So uh, within a few days, I was able to ring ring Duncan up and say, "Look, amazing, Duncan, I've got the money. I want these two. I would. I said I'd, lo- I'd love it all, but I'm a realist. I couldn't afford yeah. it. So you know that lovely little field on the corner, the one with the one that the bales in that. Yeah, that was part that of that was part patch. Of it. I see. Yeah. Yes. So Duncan bought that one, and, get it. and um, so I bought at that point or me and Liz bought those two fields behind the house yep. and the barn right so that made up the the, the sort of holding yep. but we started keeping a few cows on the eight acres we we had our first oh that's right yeah our first Devon cows we bought it was when we got married <laughs> so me and Liz uh, yeah we we bought a couple of Devon cows when we got married, because uh, people said, "What do you want for your, for?" Because we'd known each, we'd been together for about twenty years. Yeah, no, fifteen years by then. Anyway, so we were quite well established, and we'd had the house in that in the past. And they said, "So people said, what do you want?" And we said, oh, "Can we have contributions to to cows?" To cows. <laughs> so our wedding present was uh, some yeah contribution towards our first Devon cows. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's that's what we uh, that's what we bought. So our first few years of keeping cows, we didn't have the shed. Is what I'm trying I to say. see. Yeah. So they used to carve out in these fields. Yeah. And then when we bought that shed, oh, you were some boy. Oh, proper it was. And 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 then we've been slowly just up in the numbers. Well, until you and I started thinking about back my place. Yeah. We we peaked at about yeah we were running about 20 to 25 suckler cows depending on who came into the herd and who came out for yeah for quite a few years and you it worked were, really nicely and the farm all worked towards it we've accumulated a bit more ground a bit more ground now that tractors came, yeah all the stuff that goes with it all but it's taken all that time yeah, yeah. yeah that's i think that's the so know. so one of the things you and i talk about isn't it is when people comment on your videos and you, you see lots of two in front. Oh, you can't do this without that, or you need this, you do that. What about, what about, what about, what about? You can do it. You don't, you just can't do every. You can't might do not it do all everything at once, at once yeah. which is what you're doing. And I'm finding stuff. out. Yeah. I've been, I've been very good at spending money the last <laughs> 12 months. <laughs> Some both. But I haven't stopped yet. Well, <laughs> one of the things is maybe that'll be, uh, that could be another podcast, is after our first accountant's trip. Yes, we will do. If we're still talking. If we're <laughs> Fighting yeah. yeah so then and that was the other thing so so then that when we bought we and we then bought two more fields now that was straight money and that was is that the two at the, the end the, the two nice big ones the big size yeah, yeah which was which would enable us to go up to 20 and that quite simply that was a financial deal and i was able to afford it because i was then very senior at the college and good, yeah and i I every every month I saved and saved and saved, knowing that at some point I wanted to buy those two fields, yeah. and that's part of the reason we were talking about the career and what what makes you enjoy it and whether you do or whether you don't. That was one of the things that I always want did is the job was only ever one part of what I was trying to do yeah. and. So although I was enjoying the job, but I was doing the job because it was earning me money to do what I wanted to do here as well. Um, and and it's, it's, are those things in harness? Yeah, and think are those things working together? If you think what you've built up over that time, because what is it now, at 35, 48? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And your house. But look what it's done to me, Josh. I'm a shadow of a man. <laughs> 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 but I mean, if you've looked at it purely from a financial point of view, the investment you've put into this place, you oh, you see oh, it back now. Definitely. Oh, easy. Yeah, yeah. you definitely see it back. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, but that's not the point, is it? No, although it, it gives you a nice feeling. It, it, it adds. Makes you think that it was gives a good you a idea. bit of a feeling of security. Yes, doesn't it? that's yeah. the point. Yeah, uh, which is a quite a luxurious place to be. Yeah. 
But of course, you only realise it the only day you'll ever see any of that money is if you sell it. Sell it. And you don't um, want to sell it. And no. you don't want to sell it. No. But who knows? You know, things change and things move on. At some point, that at some point it will it will have to go because we won't be around forever. No. And uh, and and it's not a big enough unit. Well, I say that it's not a big enough unit to make a living. I don't necessarily believe that it's not a big enough unit to make a living if you want to muck about with such a house no. <coughs> but who knows what you could do mm. <coughs> if you had imagination and got to get three phases into that shed <laughs> exactly yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly i mean let it for caravans you know oh yeah <coughs> all those sort of things but i'm not interested in that no but it's but it might be when i'm retired such a, such a nice secluded yeah out the way place mm. you haven't got to see anyone have you no exactly and so you don't you want don't to start having to see no, people no no exactly no exactly no you, you you get out during the week to see people no so that brings us up to back my place yes which we'll go into more de- well we're going to detail now we're mm. going to a lot more detail another time yeah but i've been well you can split this up into how, how, how many, many as you want yeah. can't you so we I don't quite know how we came to the conversation at work. I think it started quite a while ago. I think I flagged it up to you fairly early on, didn't I? I just yeah. said, look, I, I haven't formulated any ideas or any plans, but I, I think I said, listen, I won't be doing this for forever. Yeah. You said, I've got a shed yeah. and a load of tractor. Yeah, have a, have a think about what might be possible. So I think I sort of, I was going to say sowed the seeds with you. In some ways, that's not. It's as much sowing it with me, if you see what I yeah, mean. Yeah. It, until you say these things out loud and get people rapping with them, because I might have said that. I thought, oh shit, I really don't want that. Yeah, yeah. If you, if, but if you chuck it into the air, you get a bit of a sense of mm. of uh, of whether you think it's possible or not. I remember when you said it seriously to me. I said, "What do you think?" I said, "Well, I'll speak to Abby." Yeah, I was sold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that doesn't mean nothing. No, if Abby's not sold. No, no. And Abby said, "Well, yeah," and I was a bit. You almost thought she'd taken say, back. You, you thought she'd say, "Why did you think she?" Might? I don't know because yeah. you know, people that don't know Abby, Abby's from a farming family. Yeah, quite a big farming family, and you know, we when I was milking cows, that was how we yeah. spent our time together. Was she used to come and help me milk? So she loves being out, loves stock, loves being involved in it. All. Yeah, I said, "Yeah, Phil said." Uh, what do you think about keeping some cattle at his shed? She goes, yeah. <laughs> that was it. That was it. <laughs> I was like, yeah. right, <laughs> I'll speak to the man. Yeah, so so we're away on that now. So, yeah, we've... Uh, so, yeah, well, so, so far, so good. I mean, from my perspective, it's already doing some of the things that I, I'd hoped in that, well, you're enthusiastic. Hmm. It is... It has enabled us to do a few... Th- so, like, the last weekend, I... Uh, it was so much easier for me to go to mum's birth- yeah, yeah. birthday sort of like all day mm-hmm. uh, because you we were, were up here doing you, the cattle. Yeah, you were up here doing the cattle. Um, I mean, I would have been able to do it. I'd have just got up earlier mm-hmm. or I've done it on Monday morning before work or blah, blah, blah. Whereas it was much more civilised. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you've got your... Uh, yeah, so for me, I think it will... So one of the things we were chatting about today, for instance, we, we had a couple of more cars over, well, three cars over the last couple of days uh, with a, some of our older cows, and it just it just will make sense now that they will hope we'll see we'll hopefully sell those to somebody with the cow calves at foot because part of what I was going to do is reduce the herd a bit so Josh can put more animals in the shed and things like that you can I suppose with farming you can talk about it but until you start to see the Do shape it. of yeah, it yeah. We've, so, we're in it we've been in it long enough to know what should work and how it works but you it, things take everything is so slow yeah exactly <laughs> yeah for people that don't haven't followed along might be new what we've done to start with is we've effectively taken on your crop of calf from, yeah, from last, last year, year. Yeah. so they're 12 months old now yeah um, just went clear of TV as of yesterday, mm-hmm. which is good. So yep. we can now pay you for the cars. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's how we're starting. We're taking on your young stock. Yeah. You and Liz were very good to us. I said, 
don't pay us up front for them. No. Just... Put the money into other stuff. Doing bits yeah. and pieces you wanted to sort of yeah. get yourself going a bit, which yeah. has been really helpful. Actually. Yeah. Things like buying silage, buying straw, yeah. the bits for the yeah. midden we want to make. I also, I didn't want. I just didn't want to sell them to you, knowing that uh, we were in the middle of TB that testing. TB that. was looming over. Yeah. So I mean, we have. We, we've now. always been very TB. Literally, it was only after we agreed to do this that it was the first time totally we were on TB. Yeah. Uh, but hopefully, that was a rogue one, and it, we all, we shot through it this year with nothing. Yeah. With not not a. So but now I feel that I can. You, you can have them me. without. <laughs> yeah, I can invoice you without thinking. <laughs> You know, just literally, yeah, it just would have felt wrong, wouldn't it? But it's a funny thing to set up with. Because originally I said, yeah, let's do that. I wanted it in my name. Yeah. That can't happen very easy on no. one holding with two people. It's they, a they don't like that. So everything's yeah. in your name still. We're bu- we're bankrolling, feeding, yeah. bedding, doing yeah. it all, and then we'll obviously pay you for the cattle now yeah. soon. So that's how we were going to start. You and Liz were on about reducing your herd. So yeah. the, what's there currently? 11 or 12 cows? Uh, d- yes. Uh, this yeah, year? Ele- 11, 11 calves this year. This yes. year. So we've got 11 ca- cows up there that have calf. We've got four or five, four or five sort of, uh, sort of 16 to 20 months. So we're getting ready to go to the... Yeah. So one, no, actually one, one just one's went... Been. Yeah, yeah, one's just gone. Might sell those as stores now or... Uh, and there's one there which we were going to keep maybe as a replacement but we probably won't now but you were um, on about keeping four or five still yeah just our favourite your, your favourite ones your pets which I think well, also to go down there yeah because the, someone needs to live in the box <laughs> yeah exactly but that yeah. works nicely because you've got an established beef round yeah with people that like your product that you produce yeah and if we were to come in and put say dairy cross calves in there mm. and try and take on your beef round Probably wouldn't swim. No, would, people. no, no. People would notice. So by having, <laughs> so by having that Devon beef still available mm-hmm. for people, I think it's going to yeah. help both of us out as well. Yeah. And also, you've got a young bull. Yes. That you've just bought. That. Yeah. You know, he's got plenty of life in him still, isn't he? So. Yeah, exactly. Well, we like you so we could have fun with that one. Because if you're buying in your dairy young stock, yeah. There will be a few heifers in that. Yep. You never know what a yeah, you, strange kind of hybrid we can... I keep bouncing ideas back and forth yeah. in my head what I'm going to do anyway. Like, yeah. Originally, I was going to fatten everything and sell it. Yeah. Then I thought, well, perhaps I might put these in the store ring and roll the money well, into the some other thing cars is, a bit If quicker. you don't fatten everything, if you you can almost keep twice the amount of animals. Yes. If you don't finish yeah. them. That's why we, what we used to do. That's why we had 20-odd <clears throat> cows. Is there's no way the size of this holding would finish everything we no, no. produced. So out of twenty cows, we would say finish five, sell five to ten as stores, and with the nice ones, sell as breeding. So yeah. we had three markets uh, with whatever, of course, we kept as replacements. Yeah. yeah. Um, but on twenty cows and our sort of relaxed system two a year was ample for replacements yeah, yeah. We, we're not sort of like on you know okay. dairy herd 25% no, no. killing out every yeah, year yeah. Um, so uh, we we didn't need many for ourselves so yeah we've, we've sold l- yeah if you look at the herd book there's volume down cattle all over, all the, place. over the place now yes for yeah. a small, so that's been very satisfying in its own right so even if we go down to five you've still got that you might keep one for replacement two for a couple of stores um, could even be enough room to finish a couple of you know sell a couple of bulls but that's that's harder work but uh, there's, there's options isn't there yeah yeah so, yeah. so, so I, we're I, having fun doing it yeah I know we've only done it since christmas so yeah it's been three months but yeah we've had the hardest three months of the year probably yeah doing all yeah, the actual yeah, physical exactly bedding and everything in the shed yeah um yeah i think the trick i think with yeah with it'll be finding that balance with of when you, when it's more full of your sturks, if you like, as as to what ones you really want to finish. Yeah. I mean, I've got friends in the who who they they aim to sell their their stores at I don't know three fifty four hundred kilos, get them gone, get seven hundred quid in the market, keep the money turning over, don't worry about finishing them at all. Yeah. 
Joe Maul is very keen on finishing all of his. Yeah. Um, but he's on a farm. He's got a big a thousand farm acre farm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's always place to space to put them. They can catch crop in grow a lot grass. Of feed themselves. Every, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Whereas we're on the polar opposite end of. Well, we've yeah. grown plenty of good grass here. Yeah, though, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> but we're going to have yeah. fun documenting making the silos yeah. and everything this year. But I, I reckon it's my contention that you can make enough forage here. You would easily finish if you had 30 i think you could finish 20 a year i don't think you'd finish 30 on the because no. i think to get the quality you wanted you'd obviously reduce the yield the quantity yeah, yeah yeah um but that's the beauty of finishing a few getting some don't want to give everybody our secrets but if you were to sell them as stores yes you want them to make the weight fairly quick but you don't need the same sort of finishing quality no, no. silage you can you, you can almost decide if there's a, if there's six that you look like they'll make a fantastic pen. Well, you hang on to those yeah, and yeah. maybe keep those through. But there's those people that are set up for doing it, aren't there? Exactly. People that are set up for finishing animals. Yeah. People that are set up for getting them yeah. to a certain weight and getting them gone. And you've already seen just in dibbling your toes in it this year. I'm still interested to see how this changes, but you know it's always been one of my philosophies is that you... You, you don't go short of grub. It, there's, there's always grub out there. Yes, yeah, yeah. I know it, it, you. It's a bit of squeaky bum time sometimes if the winter looks like it's going to be long yeah. and hard and blah blah blah. But I've never not been able to buy feed Gosh. if I've yeah. if I've wanted to. <coughs> uh, and I think the same. Will, well, you we did. You, we yeah, you just them. yeah, and you it, you decided you were going to do it. Send a message. The ten, it was ten, there, wasn't yeah, it? Ten minutes later, I had a message. Yeah. Back. Yeah, when do you want it? Exactly. Deliver it then. Now that might change as people start to realise they can't afford just to make silage for the hell of it like maybe they've been doing yeah. for years. But most farmers, and me included in this, you never mind making a bit too much because it's always nice to have a bit too much in. Yes. But, exactly. but then the, all that means sometimes is you might buy stuff that's a year old, not not that this Six season. Yeah, yeah. But no, well, I mean, we've, it's a fun learning curve. Yeah, it is. It's, and uh, the other aspect which I'm enjoying is learning to run a business as well. Cause mm. I've never. How long's JM Farming been trading now? Uh, through an accountant. Yeah. Two years. Two years. Yeah. Two, and that includes this year that we're just yes. about to close. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you've, you've done a fair bit. So my second year of accounts done yeah. this year. And that's not because he's dodgy, ladies and gentlemen. You're allowed to earn fifteen hundred quid before you need to declare it to be yeah. to, to work through sort of assess self assessment. Yeah. Or so you, you you're in your first year of, sort of JM farming. That wasn't oh the, the case. first the first twelve months I didn't first twelve months I didn't earn a penny from no, doing it. No, exactly. Brought time and money into it. Yeah, exactly. So uh, whereas now, because I was always on your shoulder saying you've got to keep an eye on that, Josh, because one day they'll you, you, you come just, to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. So that's where we're to at the moment. That takes us to roughly an hour, I think. Does it? For me. Good chat for an hour. Good you? luck. What does it say on there? Yeah, 57 minutes. That's good. Blimey, so well, we'll, thank goodness we worked on the script. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd never have filled the time, would we? <laughs> so we'll um, <laughs> call that a wrap. We'll yeah, what do people want next? Time. Yeah, after that us know what people yeah. want to know about. We'll have to get Bowman up here. Yeah, definitely. Get the uh, life as Bowman sees it. Yeah. He's had a bit of a... Fun, yeah. fun time. Well, he's a he's a proper grafter, isn't he? He is. Yeah. He's a, yes. See, I, I like to watch other people doing the work. Really. I'm a more, more managed, moving the yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Big magnet. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, we'll call that a wrap. Yeah. Cheerio.